Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 16th of November, and it's National Fast Food Day. And a big happy birthday to Christian Horner, Griff Jones, Big Nasty, and Pete Davidson. The G20 leaders gathered in Bali on Tuesday with Russia's invasion of Ukraine at the top of the agenda. Notable by his absence was Russian President Vladimir Putin, who was represented by Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Day one of the summit was addressed by Ukrainian President Zelensky, who called for the war to be stopped but not frozen, asking instead for Russian withdrawal from Ukrainian territory. Ukraine should not be offered to conclude compromises with its conscience, sovereignty, territory and independence. And if Russia says it supposedly wants to end this war, let it prove it with actions. Apparently, one cannot trust Russia's word. Zelensky also tried to appeal to China's President Xi, speaking of Russia's crazy threats of nuclear weapons and pointedly thanking the G19 for their support. As the meeting went on, Russia launched fresh cruise missile attacks on Ukraine's infrastructure and knocked out more power and water facilities. And Minister Lavrov sounded pretty unrepentant about it too. Yes, there is a war going on in Ukraine. A hybrid war that the West has unleashed. A war which the West has been preparing for, for years. Starting from the moment it supported the coming of government in a coup d'etat of clearly racist, neo-Nazi forces. On Tuesday night, an emergency meeting of NATO and the G7 was also held in Bali to discuss the Polish investigation into what appears to be a Russian missile strike in rural Poland near the Ukraine border that killed two people. President Joe Biden spoke after the meeting. And I'm going to make sure we figure out exactly what happened. And then we're going to collectively determine our next step as we investigate and proceed. There was total unanimity among the folks at the table. The nation awaits with cold hands and feet for Thursday's Hunt Fest, as Chancellor Jeremy Hunt gets to have a go at balancing the UK's books while staring down what is projected to be the longest recession in a century. Speaking to Sky News from Barmy Bali at the G20, PM Rishi Sunak was still busy softening up the public for a budget that he says will see everyone paying more taxes, even if that makes him unpopular. I think I demonstrated over the summer that I'm prepared to be honest with the country about the challenges we face and to make the difficult decisions that are required to fix them. After the catastrophic Liz and Quasi mini-budget, understandably the country's nervous and Labour's shadow levelling up Secretary Lisa Nandy wasn't exactly expecting miracles from the twin Chancellor dream team. We're in a crisis, we're in a Tory crisis. Can the Tories lead us out of it? I very much doubt it, but let's see. And if they make fairer choices, we'll back them. If they don't, then we're going to come down hard on them. Whatever Rishi's skills are when it comes to managing the country through an international war and a recession, one can only hope that they're better than his ability to pick cabinet members. For those keeping score, we're up to three cabinet-related scandals already, although only Spider-Boy Gavin Williamson's actually resigned. Deputy Prime Minister Dominic Raab remains in the spotlight over bullying accusations. Rishi's called upon any officials who have concerns to come forward, but Dave Penman, the General Secretary of the FDA Union, says that's hard to do. Civil servants have no confidence in the current process. It shouldn't be up to the whim of a Prime Minister on whether an investigation is conducted. And former head of the Foreign Office, Lord MacDonald, who worked directly for Raab, says that it wasn't an easy place to work. Dominic Raab was not aware of the impact of his behaviour on the people working for him. Colleagues did not complain to me formally, but many were scared to go into his office. On June the 16th, 2015, Donald Trump descended his golden escalator at Trump Tower and announced his intention to run for President of the United States. That moment led to seven years of madness in American politics with MAGA, the January the 6th riots, and now a red wave that never happened in the midterm elections. But Donald's not done. Despite warnings from Rupert Murdoch that Fox News will not back him this time, he couldn't resist the temptation to run for president again. Tuesday night saw the twice impeached former president announce his run as candidate for the Republican president nomination in 2024 from the ballroom of his Mar-a-Lago club in Palm Beach, Florida. The Donald was on top form as he spoke about making America great again, again. This is our country, our government and the carters of power or our, they're our carters. They're not their carters. These are our carters. And we are coming to take those carters back.
still to come on the Smart 7, FIFA just wants us all to get along, at least while the World Cup's on, and apparently the Avengers still have a group chat going. Right after this. Welcome back. The least anticipated World Cup ever is due to kick off in Qatar on Sunday. With reports of human rights abuses, migrant worker deaths as stadia were built and Qatar's awful record on LGBTQ rights, it's not really surprising there's very little excitement. Former FIFA president Sepp Blatter says Qatar's human rights record wasn't even considered during the bidding process and the awarding of the event is still under a cloud. But FIFA president Gianni Infantino hasn't given up hope. He has a plan so that the whole world can join together and enjoy the awkward occasion. So my plea is to think on a temporary ceasefire for one month for the duration of the World Cup or at least the implementation of some humanitarian corridors or anything that could lead to the resumption of dialogue as a first step. Last week saw Captain America Chris Evans crowned People magazine's official world sexiest man alive. It's a title that's previously been held by Idris Elba, The Rock and uh, Jude Law. Anyway, the former sexiest man and Thor God of Thunder Chris Hemsworth says the awarding of the title really blew up the Avengers group chat. We have an Avengers text chain and it very qu- quickly was like, what are you doing with your hands back there? It was like... Oh, yeah. It was like down, he said he's being arrested. I said he's a <laughs> beautiful mugshot. And then Jeremy Renner said a series of things which we won't repeat. Typical bloody Hawkeye throw out the group. What's his power? Accuracy? <laughs> Spare a thought for the Magic Mike fan in your life. It's been seven long years since the modestly titled Magic Mike XXL and all they've had to comfort them in the meantime is the long-running West End show. Now, in a weird coincidence, the new Magic Mike movie, Magic Mike's Last Dance, heads to London, where they're putting on, yeah, a stage show. What are the chances? Anyway, to answer your main questions, yes, Channing Tatum's in it. Yes, he spends a lot of time topless. Yes, it hits cinemas next year. I'm going to put on a show at this famous theatre. People are numb, disconnected. We're gonna wake them up with a wave of passion they've never felt before. Hell yeah. Without further ado, I give you the visionary idol's magic mind. So. This has been the Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favor and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day. Written, produced, and published by Daft Doris.